following your things danced on the breeze, sang from castles and trees. There were marble nymphs that bathed in the dew. All the winged things danced on the breeze. All the winged things danced on the breeze. Cardinals sang from castles and trees. Cardinals sang from castles and trees. All the winged things danced on the breeze. Roses in the hollow, roses in the hollow, roses in the hollow, roses in the hollow. Roses in the hollow, roses in the hollow, roses in the hollow, roses in the hollow. White quartz and columbines, otters of the field. Garnet beds, fuchsia dancers, marble nymphs in the dragonfly pools. Small bears, handy. Agate globes and cranberry mosses, pausing whiskers, berry foxes, garnet beds, roses in the hollow, fuchsia dancers, otters of the fields, paws and whiskers, berry foxes, bears and egrets, agate globes, garnet beds, roses in the hollow, fuchsia dancers, otters of the fields, paws and whiskers, berry foxes, bears and egrets. All the winged things danced on the breeze, sang from castles and trees. There were marble nymphs that danced in the dew. All the winged things danced on the breeze. All the winged things danced on the breeze, sang from castles and trees. There were marble nymphs that danced in the dew. All the winged things danced on the castles and trees. All the winged things danced on the breeze. All life sang. America. We settled in the Wisconsin wilderness, a few miles from the Portage, in a sunny woods overlooking a pond a father named Fountain Lake. Great was the delight of brothers David and Daniel and myself when father gave us a few pine boards for a boat. And it was a memorable day when we got that boat built and launched into the lake. Never shall I forget our first sail over the gradually deepening water, the sunbeams pouring through it, revealing the strange plants covering the bottom, and the fishes coming about us, staring and wondering as if the boat were a monstrous, strange fish. The water was so clear that it was almost invisible, and when we floated slowly out over the plants and fishes, we seemed to be miraculously sustained in the air while silently exploring a veritable fairyland. Our beautiful lake, named Fountain Lake by father, but Muir's Lake by the neighbors, 
is one of the many small glacier lakes that adorn the Wisconsin landscapes. It is fed by 20 or 30 meadow springs, about a half mile long, half as wide, and surrounded by low, finely modeled hills dotted with oak and hickory, and meadows full of grasses and sedges and many beautiful orchids and ferns. First, there is a zone of green, shining rushes, and just beyond the rushes, a zone of white and orange water lilies, 50 or 60 feet wide, forming a magnificent border. On bright days, when the lake was rippled by a breeze, the lilies and sun spangles danced together in radiant beauty, and it became difficult to discriminate between them. On Sundays, after or before chores and sermons and Bible lessons, we drifted about on the lake for hours, especially in lily time, getting finest lessons and sermons from the water and flowers, ducks, fishes, and muskrats. In particular, we took Christ's advice and devoutly considered the lilies, how they grow up in beauty out of gray lime mud and ride gloriously among the breezy sun spangles. On our way home, we gathered grand bouquets of them to be kept fresh all the week. No flower was hailed with greater wonder and admiration by the European settlers in general, Scotch, English, and Irish, than this white water lily. It is a magnificent plant, queen of the inland waters, pure white, three or four inches in diameter, the most beautiful, sumptuous, and deliciously fragrant of all our Wisconsin flowers. No lily garden in civilization we had ever seen could compare with our lake garden.